Hello, and welcome to the online BUS 125 lecture on prepositions. Let's get started. The whole purpose of this lecture is to help you really understand what prepositions are and know how they work in the sentence, to select the right pronouns to use and make sure that you're using um, objects of prepositions and when we're in prepositional phrases. And you already know those objective pronouns, so yes, we will revisit pronouns in this lecture. And then learn what we call proper idiomatic usage in which there are certain prepositions that are always stated a certain way and there actually are no official rules for this. It just is the way it is based on English and the English language. So in this case, it's really just a matter of knowing the usage and using it properly. And um, I hope that you begin to celebrate because prepositions are the next to the last part of speech that we are going to learn. Here we there's a complete list of prepositions, or at least um, somewhat of a list in your book. Um, but it's important to know that really what they do is they tend to connect nouns or pronouns to the rest of the sentence. For example, here are some prepositions. And if you're talking about a car and a garage, and you might say something like the car is in the garage, or the car is uh, beside the garage, or the car is um, um, between the garage and the house or something like that, but it's a way in which you can actually understand nouns and pronouns and how they relate to the rest sentence. So here again are those examples that I was discussing. Pronouns are really about showing relationships, and in this case, the car being in the garage, behind the garage, or near the garage, or in the case of seeing Mr. Redding in lunch, what's the, how does Mr. Redding relate to lunch? You saw him before, after, or during lunch. And in this case, your before, your after, and your during are your prepositions. When we talk about prepositional phrases, it's important to note that prepositions usually are found in a phrase and the noun or pronoun in that prepositional phrase is referred to the object of the preposition. So in this first one where we have above the cabinet, cabinet is the object of the preposition of and to the meeting, meeting is the object of the preposition to. Um, and in this case, we have a few um, other comments regarding before your trip with Tony and Carol. Trip, Tony, Carol, those are the objects of the preposition. And yes, they are usually nouns or pronouns. But keep in mind that those are never the subject of the sentence. They are part of the prepositional phrase. Why don't you take a look at self-assessment A. You can pause this recording and see if you feel comfortable identifying prepositions and their objects. Okay, so this is where things can get a little bit complicated. Prepositions always have objects. And it's important to know that when you're talking about the object of that preposition and it's a pronoun, that you're always using what we call the objective case. And this can be simple in a sentence that, like this first one. Mr. Williams looked at, you wouldn't say looked at I, that's your subject case, you would say Mr. Williams looked at me. And then the second one, the committee can't work without. Without is our preposition. You wouldn't say without she. You would say without her. This third one, one of my favorites, you would never say between you and I because between is a preposition. You would always say between you and me. This stuff is fun. And then here we get back to our who and whom. And after you've done the who and whom lecture, you should know that who is the subject case and whom is the object case. So because this is to whom or who, who or whom should I give this report, you know that to is your preposition and you should choose to whom should I give this report. Or another way to say that is should I give this report to him or to whom. So your objective case pronouns, me, him, her, us, them, or whom are always used with your preposition. Don't forget about these idiomatic expressions that are often used with prepositions. And again, idiomatic simply means um, it's just sort of peculiar or particular to a characteristic of a given language. So when we use some of these prepositions in their idiomatic form, there is no rule. It's just the way it is. And there's an entire list in your text, and I suggest that you have that with you as you go through some of these um, quizzes and exams so that you know which is the right preposition to refer to. And look, look at what some of those look like. And the In this first case, do we agree with something or do we agree to something? Well, let's take a look. Which of these is correct? An Analelia agrees with Amisha or Analelia agrees with the contract changes? Well, here's, here's how we look at it. 
And Alelia will agree to the contract changes, not with the contract changes. And again, the idiomatic expression, or I guess you could say why it is the way it is of the rule, is that we agree with a person, but we agree to something that is not a person. And that's why we're agreeing with Amisha, but agreeing to the contract changes. Let's move on. Are we accompanied by or accompanied with? Well, tell me which of these is correct. Kayla came to class accompanied by Daisy, or Kayla came to class accompanied with Daisy. Well, it's important to know that Kayla will come to class accompanied by Daisy. And the reason it is the way it is is that you are accompanied by a person, but you are accompanied with another object. And that's why you would be accompanied by Daisy, but you wouldn't be accompanied with her. You would be accompanied maybe with your books. Angry with and angry at. Ooh, my favorite. Let's take a look. Anna appeared to be angry with Amelia, or Anna was angry with the delay in shipment. Well, you want to be angry with a person, but you want to be angry at something that is not a person, and that's why you would be angry at the delay in the shipment. So the reason it is the way it is, you're angry with a person, but you are angry at or about something that is not a person. Parting from and parting with. Tell me which is correct. When we part with Mary, we'll go home. When we part with our old things, we feel guilty sometimes. Well, we would want to say when we part from Mary, we'll go home, but we can part with our old things. And here's the reason why. You part from a person, but you part with something that is not a person. And again, can you see how that handy list in your book would really help you through these? Because it can be confusing to remember which is which. These slides will help, but that handy list will also help a lot. What about discrepancy? Is it discrepancy in? Is it discrepancy between? Well, let's take a look. I found a discrepancy in this report. Or look at these two books and let me know if you find a discrepancy in them. And this should start to feel familiar to you because if you're talking about two books, you want to ensure you're talking about a discrepancy between. So use discrepancy in when your object of the preposition is singular. Like I found a discrepancy in just this report but use discrepancy between when the object spe specifically denotes two. Like, I found a discrepancy between these two books. If there are three, discrepancy among. In regard to, with regard to, or as regards, here's what this would look like in sentences. Brian consulted Andres in regard to the news, or with regard to the news we expect delays, or as regards to the changes, please see the professor. Only one of these is correct, and it's this one, as regards. <clears throat> Actually, let me rephrase that. I want to say all of these are correct, um, but what you want to stay away from is saying in regards or with regards. The only time you use regards is with as, and I remember that by as having an S and regards having an S. So let's take a look at the rule. All are correct, but use regard, not regards, with the phrases in regard to and with regard to. Okay, some other idiomatic usage to be aware of. Hers is different than mine. She is identical to you. Do you plan on going to the picnic? All of these are incorrect. Take a look at them for a moment, and here are the corrections. We never say different than. We say different from. We never say identical to. We say identical with. And we never plan on going anywhere. We always plan to. And remember in this fix that you want to make sure that you also fix the ing form of that verb. The correction for this would do you plan to go to the picnic, not do you plan on going. Make sure you know that when you get to quizzes and exams. Here's an example of some offending grammar from an email I received a few years ago. Look at that subject line. Don't forget, plan on attending curriculum training workshop this week or next. Plan on attending? We know that should be plan to attend in order to be correct. Why don't you give self-assessment B a try and see if you can put these concepts into practice. That's it for this recording. I hope it was helpful.